Greetings, gracefully ascending masters. Thank you for joining us today for Are You Listening? A monthly roundtable discussing all things spiritual, consciousness, the metaphysical, the unknown, and begs the question, are you listening? Are you hearing the messages that you receive? I'm Beth Soulfire, and with me is Susan Walter, and Amber Celestial Angel. And so before we get started, though, I want to do some introductions so that you know who you're speaking with today. So, Susan, take it away. Thank you. Okay, um, okay, I am an intuitive visual, visionary artist. Um, after near-death experiences as a child, I was given the ability to see into the angelic realms, allowing me to see the angels in their pure light form. Um, and I use this ability to draw your angel portraits and relay messages and insights from your angels. I am also the author and artist of this Alphagia Mandala Activation Guides and Meditation Decks. And these assist us in um, realigning with our original blueprint, as these were the frequencies used to sing our universe into existence. And I also create healing art with a conscious heart from the visions during my meditation and during dream state. And this is my way of just connecting with the divine to assist humanity to do the same and recognize the divine within ourselves and within each other. Amber? I am Amber Celestial Angel, a certified in angel intuitive practitioner, medium, angelic life coach. Divine Mother Archetype, and a Animal Communication Guide, and Certified Birth Keeper. So, and I work with the Divine Angels and Archangels in all my practices and a regular conduit with Mother Mary. And I've always been a medium, but couldn't quite open up to many people about it until I had my near-death experience, and I was told to come out and share this. Many things were revealed during that time family, very important, connection, community, cosmos. And I was also shown the angelic realm and God's light of love and so beautiful and bright, full of love and wondrous joy within that place that I call heaven. I was sent back to share this feeling with all, to bring heaven to earth in all hearts and homes and helps help you stay the path of love and beauty and walk this path of love and light truth. Beth. <laughs> Beautiful ladies, thank you. Um, well, I'm Beth Sulfire and I'm a certified shamanic energy medicine ceremonial and spiritual teacher. I'm a certified Isui Shikirioho master. Um, that's Reiki master, I don't know if I said that. <laughs> Um, I'm certified in Beyond Quantum Healing, Hypnosis, and trained in Psychosomatic Neurophysics, and I also certified in um, uh, Astrology, so Astrology is something I've kind of studied my whole life and have made it my purpose this year to really take the deep dive and take a mastery course in that, and I'm an inner, uh, ordained interfaith minister and holistic life guide, and I've been in the holistic medicine sector for 22 years now. And I'm a keeper of ancient and cosmic wisdom, trained by the inherent wisdom of my, the spirits of my own Appalachian um, folk medicine roots. And after severe and sudden uh, illness and near-death experience in 2013, it left me in a coma for five days and on life support for two weeks and a disability that I've spent years recovering from. And I'm forever linked because of that near-death experience with what I refer to as the filaments of oneness. And I refer to this oneness also as like the cosmic consciousness of great mystery. And recently, I'm happy to announce, I wanted to mention that I'm the founder of Soulfire Multiversity, which is a school of ancient wisdom and energy medicine mastery. And you sub subscribe to me at uh, Soulfire Al uh, Best Soulfire Alchemy on YouTube, and you can find all my social media and website links there. So... Uh, we welcome you today to our podcast, and we have had a couple months off, and that would be because of me. I've had uh, some couple things going on in my life with my mother having some surgery, and myself, uh, I had a procedure I had to undergo too. So thank you ladies so much for your patience with me and us getting back finally to doing this wonderful podcast, because I know this information is really needed. 
But the thing I wanted to say about us is that of all the things that bring the three of us together, we all met through a round table on near-death experience that Laura Eisenhower did with us earlier this year. And you can find the link to that in the description below. And we decided to team up and bring you this monthly round table entitled, Are You Listening? So today we're going to start our conversation on the topic of how, how, the, how we're listening to the messages that we are receiving around the dark night of the soul and, and how we can tune into our own inner wisdom and be able to discover not only what is a dark night of the soul, right? Because that's a question you might be asking, well, how, do I, how would I even know if I'm going through one? And if I am, how can I get through it? And so we figured that would be a really good topic of discussion. And so we will just take that away. So Susan was the one actually that decided this topic would be really, actually she was the one that made the suggestion. And Emma and I were totally on board because this is something we've really touched on before. We've talked about shadow work and things like that. But um, so I'm just gonna open that up for you, Susan, if you want to give it a go and we'll start talking about this very deep topic of the dark night of the soul. Yeah, it's, you know, we all go through these major life changes where we've, you know, partnership changes, job changes, moving across the country to different states, you know, all those can, you know, can trigger a dark night of the soul, as with what we're going through on a global basis right now with this pandemic. Um, there can be other terms for it, but we'll we'll stick with that for now. Um, but you know, it, it it just brings up all these you know issues, and it kind of just brings all of our issues right here. So we've got to look at them and deal with them. And yeah, you know, it's just you know, it really for me the main thing that it is is because we're not listening to the messages that we're receiving. And we're not going with the flow of what the universe is wanting to create and manifest for us. And I just think we have an opportunity right now with what we're going through globally to create the world that we truly want, not just the one where we're getting by. Because really, you know, the creator's whole plan for us to, you know, to come in and, and for even our own plans to experience in this lifetime it's not about paying the mortgage or paying the rent. It's a finding a way to find out who you truly are and for us to connect with each other on deeper levels. And I think we need to, you know, let go of our fears and start going with the flow. I couldn't say that better. Amber, do you want to interject anything? I agree with everything you said. I have always thought of as well the dark night of the soul you know, those really tough events, or usually they turn into events, but like really tough times. You really have to look deep in yourself and at everything around, but more so like yourself, you know, really get in the, the scary parts of yourself, the bad parts, you know, and mm -hmm. go through those emotions and like feel, okay, you know, go through the guilt, go through the shame, go through just everything that has been hard. And there, there are like different stages of it, I feel also like different things that can bring that on, you know, like ours, a big one for us was the near death experience. I mean, I think we all can agree that was huge. But like you said, it can be other things, you know, a move, relationship, these different things. I know one of mine was while I was pregnant as well. And maybe we can go into you know, some of our certain ones that really shook us because it's like they do, they shake you to the core. That's really, I feel when you know, you know, maybe not everybody has had it the same, like a real push, but I know we all have. And usually that's what it takes to get to the next step, right? To get to that higher and higher vibration each time is a is something like that. No, finally, you know, you're up there and you just take what you get, you know, take all these things that come, but you're able to deal with everything so much easier. And yeah. being able to walk through and, you know, finding that path through the, you know, that dark, that darkness within yourself, that's the accomplishment. Yeah. 
And I think too, it's hard, especially with what's going on right now. I think people, maybe, you know what? And we're not, it's not to say that you go through one dark night of the soul and then you're all cured up and enlightened, right? Because we know, you you know, this is something I refer to this a lot. Um, I, I've called myself, referred to myself before as a spiritual doula. And I know you, you both relate to that, especially Amber, um, where you uh, work with these energies of the birthing energies. Um, you know, this is where you're going down into the cave and you find yourself in, in just a dark place of having this no longer really being able to identify with yourself as you once knew yourself, right? So it's like, if we think about the word ego, right? And yeah, I believe, um, and if you're reading the I Ching and you're studying like traditional uh, Chinese medicine, that I translates, and this, this could be a Taoist thing as well, it translates to I. So I literally means ego. And we talk about this ego death, and a lot of people don't, they might not know what that is, right? Because they hear, well, what does that mean, ego death? Um, does that mean that I have a big head and I'm a narcissist, and then suddenly I just decide, uh, oh, no, I'm humble? Well, that can be part of it, but that's not the whole truth of it. Um, you know, just to kind of speak a, a little bit about what the dark night of the soul is, uh, a little bit more just to expand. You know, Amber and, and Susan, you both were talking about just these big, huge changes and shifts that we have in life. And it could be anything from as small as a, a breakup with somebody that, you know, you've been in a relationship with for a few years to a spiritual depression, right? Because we can wake up one day and just realize I don't really identify with the beliefs that I grew up with. It doesn't even have to be a spiritual belief, right? It can be any kind of core belief system that you just come to a sudden realization that, oh, this is not right. This is not true. I don't think that this feels like what I believe in anymore. And, you know, it can kind of lead in a way to sometimes an existential crisis where we kind of have that feeling of, um, I don't know who I am anymore because we identify that I am. Think about it. If you say I am, like when we did our bios, I am. You ask somebody in Western society, who are, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm a, I'm a, an accountant, you know, I, I'm, I, whatever that I am is. That's how Western society has conditioned us to identify ourselves is by what we do for a living. Well, 2020 has taught taught quite a bit of people uh, uh, new things about that, right? I think so many people right now are having to re-identify everything about what they've traditionally believed, whether that be something political, whether that be something um, in their basic ideologies, their philosophy, their religion, their spirituality, who it is that they think they are, um, who their family is, right? If they've gone through a big divorce or, or, or maybe it's headed that way or a child has left home and they're worried out of their mind because, you know, look what kind of has been going on in the country. Um, yeah, I mean, so there's a lot of reasons that you might go through this dark night of the soul. And there can be gradients of it, right? So there are big, huge ones, like you said, Amber, the ones we went through with this near-death experience and having a severe illness and having to, you know, recover and to, you know, just the ones that I was uh, talking about a second ago. So, yeah, that's a great big bite just to talk about what that dark night of the soul even is. And most people watching this right now are going to be going, oh, okay, I'm in one right now, or I've been one, or I see what happened there, or gee, I might be headed towards the line, right? So that's what we're here to do is kind of help shed a little bit of light on what we've done in the past that help us or how we might help our clients to get through and navigate the dark night of the soul so that you do come out the other end, as Susan said. Um, you know, and Amber mentioned on that higher octave so that you have that choice where you've got a path to go down. And it might not just be choice A or choice B. It might be a whole conglomerate, you know, a whole octopus worth of, you know, paths and choices that you can make. But we all want to cast that line to reach our highest destiny. And if we're not constantly working to be on that highest destiny line for ourselves, we're not really doing anything good for the collective or for ourselves. So 
speaks to what you were saying about what kind of world do we want to create, right? And we have to start right here with us and address the things that are going on inside of us. And like Amber mentioned, it, it's like we have to go to those places inside of ourselves that are really deep and ask. You can even, you know, to do, speak shadow work a little bit. You know, what is it that I don't like about myself? What, what is it I don't want to admit about myself, right? How, how is it that I can maybe be this way and I may be in denial about it, right? So that speaks more to the shadow work side, but that's still part of a dark night of the soul because that can be something that leads to it. So I rambled on a tangent there for a minute. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, you know, uh, I think this is something we all, all three of us just, uh, we could probably talk about this like nonstop for hours. <laughs> but anyway. And so, you know, we all have the experience where, and, realization at different times in our life with the near-death experience and that reminded us very strongly that we're not on this journey alone right and so many people think they are Absolutely. and yeah yeah that old you know saying where yeah where you know when yeah us you know that meme we've all seen it where you know all of a sudden there there's Originally, there's two tracks in the sand, and then all of a sudden, there's one. Yep. And then it's, yeah, it's, well, that was the time that you were being carried. Yeah. That you, yeah, that you were being assisted. So, yeah, um, so turn to each other. Yeah. Yeah, because we're all going, we've either all gone through it or are all going through it right now. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, um, and be doing things to take better care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, and so many people, especially in the past, has been, you know, taking care of yourself was going out and doing something and spending, you know, going shopping, going to the spa, going doing this or that that spent a lot of money. And I know a lot of us are wanting, because of the changes, we're a little hesitant to spend money than, you know, that maybe we would have been willing to in the past, but now we're not. So just take the day off. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and just, you know, go for walks, enjoy nature. You know, so, you know, have a nice cup of tea, take a, take a hot bath instead of a shower. You know, just do something more relaxing. Do, you know, add some essential oils to that to treat yourself in some way. Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, to, to expand on that a little bit, one of the things that I've been thinking about a whole lot lately is because you said, I, you're never alone. Even if you live alone and even if you find yourself not being that kind of person who you just don't have a whole lot of friends that you can reach out to, they may be busy in their own crisis or something and you just feel like you can't reach out or what, whatever, right? Cause we all are really going through new and different things that we've probably never encountered before in our lifetime. Um, one of the things that speak to my heart and and that I love because of my roots in Appalachian folk wisdom traditions and also just the sh uh, shamanic arts and I'm going to say indigenous wisdom in general and folk knowledge in general because that's something that we had as a society held on so far away from that you really have to make it a point for one thing, for it even coming to your peripheral vision, to even understand that that's something that you can study, I go, oh, maybe this could help me. But the reason I want to speak to that is because uh, you mentioned walking out in nature. You know, that's part of that listening. I, so many things are going on right now to interfere with what we can hear, right? We're talking about, are you listening? If you let that interference come and you're not doing things to clear that out, like the self-care that Susan just mentioned, it's going to cause you to have such a bad interference that you're not going to be able to hear any message that comes along. Now, for me, I, you know, I work a lot with spirit animals, helpers, allies, guides, teachers. You guys both work with angels and the same. Those come through for you when you're working with clients and no different for me. And when I go outside and I go by the creek, um, I make it a point to talk to the water elementals, the water itself, right? Just to be in a state of gratitude and to say thank you. And same thing with 
you know, the trees and the plants, the animals, you know, my, my yard is full of animals, much more so now than it was, um, even just a year ago, I've noticed, and, um, or the sky beings or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. You could see uh, uh, birds and just say hello. It can start as simple as that. You don't have to go into a meditation and start trying to talk the grass out off the bat, right? Um, but those those animistic ways, those um, folk ways, I feel like are things that it's kind of our duty to not only remember and find out about, but preserve because it is part of what keeps us so that we're never alone. Even if we find ourselves out in the wilderness, that we're never, ever alone. If we can't reach out to somebody who's a loved one, that we're never, never alone. And um, I know one of the things that I was I'm hoping still to do as soon as my, you know, my mom is able to go home and I'm off sabbatical right now, I'm on sabbatical. But, you know, as soon as I'm able to come away from that, I really would love to do something for people um, that's a grief ritual, right? And it's using water and you are actually having the water is helping you process through your grief and it can be anything that you're dealing with right and and even if you find yourself completely alone that's something that you can you know grab and reach out to and 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 have a guide or a teacher to kind of lead you through and walk you through the steps that you need to do behind that all that there is is intention if you can't find that information, all you got to do is have an intention to do it. I don't care if you don't have access to a creek. Do it in your bath water. Do it at the sink. Um, just make it your intention to live, right, from that state. Find something of gratitude. The water's cold. Does it feel good? You know, that is something that you can say you can, in that moment, to feel grateful for, even in the times when you feel the darkest of moments and the most alone. Now, my, one more point about that, and I'm going to shut up. <laughs> um, I know when I was going through one of my dark nights of the soul, right, um, after I got out of the hospital and I came home, I was still disabled for many months. And going on a year, it took me to get completely out of the wheelchair off of a walker for I was walking again. And so for many months, I was completely bed fast. And I had to depend on somebody else to come and give me a shower. And... It, and, and, and I had liquid dysphagia, so I couldn't drink water. Um, I was I had to drink thickened nectar. And when I was first able to start drinking cold water again, by itself, just that pure liquid refresh, I call water liquid consciousness because it really is in so many different ways. But it just, I was so grateful. And it was, and, and this was way before I entered my shamanic, my formal shamanic training. This was after I had that first initiation and that call. I, would, I wouldn't say the first one. I would say the, the one that mattered in the near-death experience. Um, but that water just broke me. It, like, it broke my heart open with gratitude. And it allowed me to form a new relationship with that was the first element, right? What, in fire, wind, weather, water, we're surrounded by them. And they are part of us, and we are part of them because we're not just living in nature or God among nature. But we are nature, right? We we all know that. So I just wanted to stress that and, and tell you that little story um, because it's like Susan says, even if you find yourself some somebody who does does feel alone for whatever reason and you're hurting, reach out to those things that are around you and your natural habitat, right? Even if you just live in, a, in an apartment where you can't get to anything really supernatural, like out in the woods, there's supernatural is always available to you. And just finding that, that bit of gratitude, even if you can't walk and talk or drink or, it, you know, do anything for yourself, uh, or, you know, it's not quite that bad, but you're still really, it feels bad to you. It feels just as bad to you to be that isolated. In that dark, and that's why I call it the dark night of the soul. You feel like you're dark in darkness and alone. It's finding those little bitty things that you realize are actually the world in those little bitty things that can help you get through. So I'm done with that. I just wanted to give you that tidbit that uh, made me reminded me when you said that we're never alone. So thank you for that. Yes. I agree. Yep. We are never alone. And 
going into that water, like water is so important, like on so many levels, it's cleansing. I mean, just think of that cleanse. I mean, you know, that whole thing, getting baptized, you're going to the water to let go, to be cleansed, to be free, but on a bigger level than just baptizing in like that, a religion. It's just for everyone. Everyone can use a cleansing. Um, and going into what you said with the help, like, I feel like that is so important. Like, I know so many people, I think we've been conditioned to, like, if you need help, you're weak. You know, it's either that if you need help, you're weak or somebody who just, you know, asks everybody for help because they take advantage, you know? So, I mean, it's like, where's that middle line, you know, coming to that balance that it's actually okay to ask for help. I know that was one of my biggest issues is asking for help. You know, like you said, my, that probably did not happen for me until after my near death experience when I literally couldn't walk for a couple of weeks, I couldn't walk hardly and I had to have help and I had to let go. I had to let go of like having things done the way I do them, you know, the dishes, the way I do it, the house, I want, the way I do it and let somebody else do it and do it their way, what they knew best, you know, and that's really when I had to let go of a lot of that. The help, it's okay for help. Like that is how people actually, most people end up coming through a dark night of the soul and coming out clearer and better is by getting that help from somebody they trust or even don't trust, you know, it don't, I mean, you know, just somebody who can help anyway. That, yeah, I mean, that, that is one of the most important things that is, it, it is okay for help. It's okay to get some help. Also though, you have to realize, you know, not dragging someone's energy at the same time, you know, because that can happen sometimes, we know, like, if somebody just takes too much energy, you're trying to help, and then they're just sucking it all. So it's just, you know, also having the respect. But, I mean, help is all that, that it's a huge thing. I don't know if we want to go in. Do you guys want to tell any of our stories, a Dark Night of the Soul story, like a big change that any of you have went through? Which one? <laughs> yeah, which one? <laughs> which one? I, I've got several, but go ahead, Susan, because, yeah. Oh, geez. You know, <laughs> um, some of the different ones I know, like, um, you know, the months leading up to, uh, you know, um, ending a marriage, you know, for me was one of my biggest ones. Um, yeah, just realizing that this, you know, this really isn't going to move forward. And, you know, it, it, there was a grieving process before I was able to speak it. And I think, yeah, and, and I think that's very common. At the time I didn't, but now I do. Um, yeah, and there's also been, you know, when I've been laid off from a, you know, a job that, yeah, I actually really enjoy. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, and that one is actually, th that last one, the last time I got laid off, so I've been laid off more than once because, you know, uh, you know, the division I worked for in a tech company got bought out by another company and they moved it to Canada. Yeah, I was offered a job in Canada, but no, <laughs> I'm not moving to Canada. But uh, the last time, um, yeah, I think I'd, I'd been building up to get that message that I needed to move into doing my art and the angel portraits and different things that I do full time. Um, and that last time, you know, was, yeah, I think a lot of ways was the hardest one. But it is the one that finally got me to, to listen um, and step up and do what I'm truly meant to do, not just, you know, what I was doing to pay the bills and, and take care of my kids. And this, I'm, and this, for me, it is much more rewarding, much more fulfilling. And I think that's what we all, that's the part of what we need to create in this world is finding, you know, something that we still contribute to the society that with, that we live in, we can still contribute to our homes, but it's a way that really, you know, soothes, soothes the soul in a way that, you know, 
So, you know, so we're still contributing, but we, we feel at peace with ourselves. Yeah. And, and some of us are going to have to go through some big enough changes that maybe we don't make as much money as we used to, but to, you know, realizing also that we don't need the, the big house and the stuff and the, you know, we can really find a lot more peace by, you know, having a little less and maybe having more time for those relationships that really do mean something to us. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I guess oh, that's like Susan said, which one? <laughs> um, I've been through a divorce myself when I was really young. Uh, that was, I lost my brother when I was 12. Um, he died in a car accident. That was tough, you know, being a young kid and not having anybody to help me uh, to get through that. That one lasted for several years, and I kind of came out of a little bit, but I didn't really, I didn't really have anything spiritual in my life at the time except for my church family that, you know, I depended on, I guess, and uh, and it was good. I mean, it worked for me, you know, when I was growing up. Um, I'm, so I'm grateful for that part of my life, for sure. Um, and the people that were part of my life back then. But I'd say probably um, one of the most recent ones that was uh, just before I had my near-death experience and my illness that took me out. Um, I had, in 2009, I had a spa a day spa that, that shut down and it was pretty big. I mean, it wasn't huge, but it was like six, tr six treatment rooms and it was my baby. I mean, I, I designed that place every single room. I mean, I literally drew out the design for it and had to give it to an architect and it was, you know, it was something that I had in my 10 year plan, but not my like two year plan because of the guy that I was seeing at the time kind of ushered it in faster than maybe it should have gone and uh he's also not with us anymore because uh years after we split up he ended up taking his life too uh, we're not really sure what happened with him but so that was kind of an, uh, another one of those you know that spun off but with the spa I mean to me it just felt like an energetic miscarriage um, because it just happened so suddenly that the economy went south in 2008. Everybody remembers that. And my business really saw the impact of that the following year. And um, my landlord just went in one day and just shut the door. He just closed the doors down. And um, there was a bunch of stuff that happened I don't really want to go into with that, um, that I didn't even find out until years afterwards. But it was horrible like that was something that just it, it took me out of my life in a really big way and if you can imagine just being out in the ocean swimming and having a great time and suddenly you're just sucked under by a big current and you drown well that's what it felt like to me um, I was completely lost I that whole I am right went away um, I, who I identified myself as at the time um, you know, and I, I really didn't go back to work right away. I couldn't really find work because of the economy situation that we were all in. And um, it was just a really hard time for me. And um, and really, I didn't, I had barely kind of like try, started figuring my way out of that a little bit when I got sick. And uh, in 2012, my health started really just going downhill uh, and the, but that was not long after I found out about um, the guy that I was with uh, when when the day spa was built and stuff like that. I was in a relationship with him for about four or five years, and then it was it was right after that that uh, my health really started taking a turn for the worse. And um, I, it wasn't anything big, you know. I mean, it was like well, I mean, there were some big things. Like I came down with a case of shingles and just like a bunch of weird weird things happening. Um, I won't go into the great tips because we talked about that some in our near-death experience discussions that we've had. But, um, but yeah, and then that's when I found myself, you know, waking up from a coma and going, hey, what happened to me? And I didn't know. But I, I think for me that that was just like a, 
a collapsing time. And I look back over the last 12 years and there was many things, right? They just kind of led from one dark, dark night of the soul into another. And just when I felt myself coming back up, something else would happen again to pull me back under. So in many ways, I feel like I've had to just fight teeth and nail to get to where I am now. And, uh, you know, I think that's probably true for a lot of people, um, especially this year in 2020 with all the things that we're dealing with right now. Um, the only way I really had to get through it was just learning to lean on the resources that I did have at the time. Um, because I was a, I knew energy healing modalities, like I've been doing Reiki since before it was cool, back in the early 2000s. And, um, I, you know, I did a lot of that stuff for myself, even before I got sick. And I had spiritual practices before I got sick, but it was nothing like after I had my near-death experience. That really changed everything for me. Uh, it just uh, widened my perspective to like infinity, right? <laughs> so that's just sort of how that one is. But so, yeah, I mean, I wish I had had those tools back then. I wish I had had those tools. And I think that's why we feel compelled to do what we do for a living because it's painful for us to stand by and watch somebody else suffer when we know that there are these beautiful tools that they can take and go, by the way, here, you can do this. Here, you can do that. Try this one out for size, you know. And it, and it would have really been helpful to me, I know during those times in my life, to have had people or resources that I could hear and listen to that, that gave me some of this um, beautiful magic, for lack of a better term. Um, that lamp right on the pathway, that lamp in the cave even, or to come and sit with you in the dark and help you go through that birthing process. So, yeah, that's a couple of mine. <laughs> uh, as yep. so as the days of our lives. <laughs> but go ahead. Yes. Yes. I feel like my childhood like was just pretty much dark most of it, you know, like so Yep, I can identify. <laughs> yep. So I was always kind of in the dark in a way, you know what I mean? Not in the dark, but but like more negative feeling, you know what I mean? Like I didn't really truly know family, happiness. You know, I didn't really truly know that experience. So I feel like because of that is probably where my dark night of the soul like really stemmed like that like you said it's like it brings things up and then it's just kind of a long process of healing and mine was probably one of my biggest was just from not knowing the family dynamic you know what a family looks like a man woman you know like that i was very challenged like with with relationships right so I didn't really have a dad or a mom I mean she was not a very good mom so but my dad was never really around so I carried this kind of like abandonment issues this kind of this kind of codependency yet like you said, ultra independence, you know, there was that post too. I was like, that's so true because I kind of had like both. I was like, I really always wanted to be in a relationship. You know, I was always with someone and I was very, you know, I've always been like loyal, like, you know, a good where I don't do anything to hurt somebody. You know what I mean? So, but I always like needed somebody there yet. I also, even when I was being hurt because pretty much all of my relationships, I had come in to like help, right? Because I was kind of this, you know, beacon always, but I chose people who needed help <laughs> for the longest time. I was like my, well, I don't know if I chose them or they just came, but like, and so I would just repeatedly get hurt and it's like, Growing up with that, I feel like that is kind of what molded that in a way is, you know, thinking, oh, that's okay. Like, that's okay. They don't mean to hurt me. Like, you know, with my first, I wasn't in an abusive relationship. I mean, you know, I was pregnant and got pushed into a table, nine months pregnant, could have lost my baby. And, you know, that's where we say, if you don't get the message, you know, 
you got to get the message eventually. But that was a wake up call. I mean, that was probably my first wake up call. And it wasn't even that time. And that's what, you know, I look back on and I, this is what I like to stress to people too. You know, no matter what, any time is a good time to change it, to wake up to like say, okay, enough is enough because, and then later on after you've done your healing or while you do your healing, it's not being so ashamed, you know, taking that shame away. Cause I feel like that was something for a while too, but I still stayed. And then finally until, you know, a very more severe thing happened and I get pushed into my child's crib as he's sleeping. I'm like, okay, now I need to leave now. <laughs> you know, now is the time enough is enough. So I had this dysfunction of what a relationship was. I had a dysfunction of myself, you know, like I, I just didn't want to be alone yet. I I always would feel like I had the abandonment stuff going on, you know, like, cause I had been that so much before abandoned. I didn't want anyone to abandon me, you know, and that made me feel close to anybody that I was with. Like I, I didn't want to abandon them. Like, why do I want to abandon them when I know what that feels like? So it was hard for me to let go with a lot of my relationships. Finally, when I decided to, I mean, I still didn't have that, kind of what I would call like the feminine energy. I was very masculine, right? That was my defensive thing for being with the people I chose and not quite knowing what man and woman look like, you know, what, I mean, I was just, just so dysfunctional. So I was very like masculine and I, and that was also one of my things I had to go through. And then this is very relevant and important because then it's kind of what shapes into as I go on and get older and go through kind of those things learning in a relationship that could actually teach me that. Like I finally found a relationship that could teach me and show me those things that, you know, call me out and say, you don't really do that. You know, that's not the way to handle things. So I'm like, Oh, you know, I'd kind of wake up to things here. But then when I was pregnant with my second son, I really started getting more into, you know, mother. And I did that anyway with my first son, but it, it kind of didn't really hit me until my second. And that's when I started receiving my messages more because that was one of my things. I had to suppress who I was. Like, I did not show anybody who I was until after my near-death experience. It was suppressed. I mean, I always had the gifts, but I couldn't really tell anybody. My spouse, yeah, he knew, but not really mostly anybody else. Some here and there, but not much, because I still didn't even know myself and what everything was. But with my second, then I really awakened to that. Um, you know, I really started getting more connected with, saints and angels in particular coming through with messages and and I started getting connected in myself like I knew I wanted a natural birth at that point and I knew like m I'm a woman you know I started going I started really realizing woman who was woman I can birth a child you know I, I can I'm able to do this don't take it for granted because I know some can't and that's also tragic and I'm sorry for anybody who has to go through that but so I'm grateful you know I'm grateful for that and look I can do that so that really brought out my femininity having my second child so that was kind of I feel like my kind of healing through it and finally getting here and that big thing kind of healed it and then with my third um, then I felt like I was so depressed. This was another one that came up, you know, cause they happen, but I got so depressed because I, I just didn't feel right. Um, yeah, that goes into, I am pretty sure I had preeclampsia during the pregnancy, but they didn't, they kept saying, oh, you're fine. You're fine. Nothing's wrong. It's normal. I'm like, no, it's not normal. I know how I feel. And this is not normal. But anyway, I was also just very depressed. And part of that was because I couldn't breastfeed 
my second son. And that just put me in depression. I just was like, I'm supposed to be able to provide this for him. I mean, I'm supposed to be able to, I can't do my job, you know, like why can all these other women do that? And I can't. And so I really, that really put me in a depressive mode and along with the, um, health issues I was having and I was taking care of my grandma and she was falling a lot. She was in the early stages of dementia. So, I mean, she started falling. I couldn't do all that I felt I should be able to do. You know, it was just, it was a big dark night that I had to go through. I, I would just cry. I would just, ugh, it was a lot. And then when I finally, well, when I had my son and then I had the was diagnosed with the postpartum um, preeclampsia. You know, all that, I went through all that, and that's when I had to learn help. Like, it's okay for people to help you. It's okay, like let, letting go of that where you think that it's weakness to get help. And I had to just strip that. So many layers stripped, that's what I'm saying, over the years, so many layers stripped, the abandonment, the codependency, the ultra dependency, the, the not wanting help, the gratitude came actually gratitude more so came for me during my near death experience. I asked, you know, can I stay alive? I just want to see my children grow up. Like, can I stay alive for that? And they showed me this kind of life review of my children older. And so I saw, I saw them older, like birthdays as they were older. And in that moment after that, I said, okay, well, if that is what I get, then I'm going to be grateful for it because, you know, that's what I asked for. And I kind of giggled about it. Like I did ask for just to see him older and I got it. So I do thank you for that. And that's when I really feel I took on the gratitude, you know, learned that lesson. So it's all about learning the lessons and healing you know, healing from all these traumas that we, we either create ourselves or have been put on us, you know, but none of it's ever our fault. You know, none of it's, we have the choice, but we have to realize we have the choice and we have to be okay with getting help and getting, and, and admitting that there are things wrong, right? Not wrong, but admitting that are, there are things that we need to change to grow to get into our highest and best self and then when you're when you are done with the healing when you've got all those traumas i feel like when we've got all those traumas healed it's like they're still there that's the thing you know there was an analogy the other day of um, i was just talking to somebody about this that you you have an, a wound, you know, but if you keep your wounds open there and bleeding they're bleeding on yourself but they're bleeding on others too you know, anybody who comes in, they're being bled on from this wound. Well, at least we can clean up the wound and sew it up and get it, get it all clean and better. It's still there. It's still going to be there. We still, I still sometimes have confidence issues is one of my biggest things because I was shunned as a child for exactly what I do, which is this, you know, I'd have dreams. I would have visions. I would tell somebody they, they'd, my mom would say, no, you're not. You're lying. You know, I lived in a, in a, we lived in a, um, um, like a home that was a Christian home. And so we all had to be very good and proper. You know, we had to be on a rest behavior and I would tell some people and they would ask me about it. So there were some who were interested and then she would say, you're just trying to get attention. You know, so the, there's so many things that we, that's something that carries on. Like sometimes I have to go back and ground myself and say, okay, it's okay, because that's, that's a healed wound, but it's still there, right? There was still the cut. So things can still come up here and there. So that's the thing too. When you're healed, you are healed. Yeah, your wounds are cleaned and better. You're not bleeding all over, but it's still there and it's still present. So we have to come back and ground. And that's why when you're healed, when, you know, when you've done the work, the shadow work, the gone through your dark night of the soul, when those things come up, it's just much easier to get back to the place of, you know what, it's okay. 
you know, nurture yourself however we need to, to get through it. Come back from a place of love instead of fear. And so I feel like that's what really the whole healing and going through all that is really about being coming back to the center and balanced and loving place in the end, instead of out of fear and hurt and blame and shame and that stuff just lets go. So yep, your ego, that's the ego death, right? And it, it's just, you're not coming from a place of poor me or, you know, victim and like you're more coming from a place of I've got to take my time and it's okay give myself that time give this person this time that they may need because we all go through it and that's actually how you know what my motherly love podcast is even about bringing moms on who've been through all different walks of life to show you know we're all capable and we all are but I mean I just have my video cast for moms in particular to show other moms anybody we're all here to be our highest and best version of ourselves and learn our lessons and go through it. So that's my big rant. I hear it uh, echoes and and everything that we talk about. And I'm uh, talking about these things that happen to us and these shifts in life, these major things that just throw us for a loop. And in in our line of work, I'll say, and in my line of work. This all always goes back to a point of self-worth. It always goes back to a point of self-love and the fact that we were not taught how to value and love ourselves and to honor ourselves, to speak our truth because their parents or elders or teachers around us were taught also not to. They were taught to suppress and put yourself in that box. Don't make other people around you uncomfortable. Don't do that. Stay down in your little hidey hole, right? Keep quiet. You know, and it's, it's interesting because let's say you got a child and it has just discovered that it can, it loves to dance and, and it's just dancing and dancing. It's having the best time in the world. And one of the parents looks at it or the, the adults, let's say, around uh, sees the child dancing and, oh my gosh, you're so cute. You're so perfect. You're just dancing and having such a happy time. So the child's like noticing that it's being noticed, right? And then the adults say, well, now we want to, we want to have you uh, to, to get up and dance and be happy. But the child is aware now that it's being watched and it raises a feeling of expectation of performance and so it starts to you know maybe not discipline because that's not maybe the right word I'm looking for but maybe even put on airs right maybe it decides to, to put on a little bit more of a show than it normally would Let's, how can I make it better how can I improve because it's used to witnessing the adults in my life do that so it patterns it's um or it's on behavior after that and then it gets, and then the, the adults are like, no, 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 do it the way that you were doing it before. That was much cuter when you were authentic, right? And so immediately this cognitive dissonance comes into play where it's like, okay, they like me and they want me to be me, but only, only under their conditions that makes them happy and I have to be a certain way. And so that whole idea... To me, it just feels like that there's so many ways in which our own creative self, our creative self-expression from the time we are like zero to five, right? And many times this happens even in the womb. We have a wound or a trauma that occurs to us energetically even. Um, and it can be that first time that it gets bottled up. So, you know, you're expressing yourself, however that is, through joy, laughter, innocent, playfulness, curiosity, whatever that might be, or expressing your gifts, right? Because we might have seen or uh, heard or felt or talked to uh, spirits, right? Um, and the minute we told the adults around us about that, they don't understand that. They're afraid of that. So they're going to instill that fear within us so that we don't talk about it because it makes them uncomfortable. So that automatically deducts from and takes away our own self-worth, our own ability to love ourselves. And, you know, it really... It, when you're doing this kind of work, it's hard work. It's not easy. But when you make the choice to do the hard work 
it is so worth it because you, who you believe you are, who you believe you are, and what you believe you deserve really is what sends you on the life path that you're going to be on. And if you believe that, if, you, if your be belief of who you are is based on what somebody else wanted you to be, that's not you authentically. And if what you believe you deserve is based on what somebody else taught you that you deserved or made you feel like you deserved or didn't deserve, as the case may be so often, you're going to go throughout your life having that programming still installed and we're running on a false, a false programming, right? And it's, it's not us authentically. And it's not what we truly believe. And we're taking in everything that's been spoon-fed to us. We take in everything that we're told that we should believe. And we don't take a moment to let it sit with us and feel like what rings true to us, what feels right to us, to go out and do our own research, right? There's something called the walkabout where you leave the tribe and you, you, you're you booted out and some places you're just kicked out. It's like you reach a certain age and it's like, no, you have to, you go make it on your own. When you've made it on your own, you come back if you're alive, you're right? So it's like, and, and people have to go out and they have to find out what their strengths are. They find out real quick what their weaknesses are. Um, and they find out what's true for them and how to relate to every part of the world and know whether or not something or someone means them well. Um, there's a word for that. Um, uh, I think it's the Salagi language. It's called Shante Ishta, I see with my heart. Our hearts actually have an eye, if you will. So we, we have to hone that ability to be able to take all of the information that comes from without us and to pull it through that heart eye and to really feel how it sits with us if it has a resonant frequency of love and joy and peace and happiness and tranquility and like Susan said and Anne Amber says she what is your uh, your um bringing heaven to earth right that's what you talk about and so that's what we're doing and and then I was talking to a, a really good friend of mine um Deborah McDermott and uh, she and I are in partnership with Sacred Life Academy and a couple other projects we're working on together. She said to me, you know, uh, do you ever think about the fact that maybe 5D isn't something that we're headed for? Maybe 3D is something that we br actually bring here. I'm like, that's been my experience. I mean, I don't know that it's about that something, the fifth dimension or any other dimensional reality is just going to happen to us so much as that we bring it into being through us, right? We bring that energy through us. If it's true that everything that we see when we open our eyes is a mirror reflection of what is actually in existence within us, then we have to, that's where this mirror and this shadow work and the dark night of the soul is so important that you are getting help and that you are finding that help no matter where it is, right? Um, that you're finding assistance no matter where you're finding that from through a spirit guide through deeply well deeply wise ancestors or uh, you know friends and neighbors um, maybe even a stranger that you, you stock up a conversation with there's always going to be those little angels that are there that cross our paths during our darkest time and I know that all three of us know that there that has happened to us every time and if we hadn't been able to witness it, to observe it, to realize it, and go, oh my gosh, there's help for me here. I'm not alone. If we hadn't reached onto that one thing or grabbed onto that one thing that came along, we might not be where we are right now, right? We might have made a decision to go down that darker road and, and never heal from these wounds. And certainly that is the easier path. It's much easier to just blame everybody else, um, to blame our parents, our elders, our teachers and anybody else, society, government, every, we can blame a lot of things and a lot of people, events and circumstances for who we are, right, and how we respond a lot. But I feel like that that's something that we can make a conscious decision to say, okay, the past, the way that I've been doing this so far is not working. 
<laughs> it's not working because I keep finding myself in the same place over and over again or worse. How can I do this better? What can I do that's better? How can I respond better? Um, you know, and that, and that goes back to recalibrating that self-love and that self-worth. Figuring out what it is, who it is that you are, what it is that you believe you deserve, right? So I just wanted to kind of mention those things because uh, for me, it always seems to kind of harken back to our childhood trauma, right? So many times. And those childhood traumas, if they haven't been healed, they always get reopened and re-triggered in a really big way when things that have happened to us this year happen. And, and Susan had mentioned earlier, I believe, that we're going through a collective dark night of the soul on this planet. I mean, look at everything that's happening. Big, huge shifts and changes. Um, and I wanted to mention something about the astrology, so I'll talk about that in a minute. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just we're, we're all going through this. And so it's important for us, I feel like, really right now to recognize that other people are hurting too. And we need to be able to see the reflection of the good in ourselves and other people. We need to be able to look at other people and have some sort of faith restored in humanity in whatever way that that might be. Small example, and then I'm going to zip it for this time. We had a, a fellow was walking um, by the yard uh, down the road today. And uh, Brent said that he was, he was out of a job and that he, well, actually, wasn't that he was out of a job, but he was out of work right now, but he was waiting on some disability to come through that he was um, a veteran of, like, I don't even remember, like, all the, around the particulars of the story, but he was getting his disability from having damage from Agent Orange, I guess, in Vietnam. The guy was in his 70s, and um, so he was trying to find some work to do, right, and he had, like, some tools, some gardening tools, and he offered, if there was anything that we had to do for him around here, well, we don't have time to do any yard work, so Grant was happy to kind of offer him a job, and give him some money to help him along his way in exchange for that. And it really made him feel good. It made the guy feel good. You know, he's got some money in his pocket and he's actually out doing something to try to better his life and try to make his way until he can see a means for something else to come through for him. And to me, that is a perfect representative um, a little event that happened today that just, it kind of in a way kind of restores that faith, that bit in humanity where you go, there's good in the world. Good, there's good people in the world. People want to do the right thing no matter what that is. They want to feel good. They want to live in a state of love and peace and, and do good things for one another. And, you know, I think as long as we are taking care of ourselves and we're really paying attention to how we feel and we're taking care of ourselves in whatever way we can, sometimes going out of our way to help another person can help. It can be the key that makes us feel better. That's what we do as we are on this journey and like to find whatever is our greatest mission, fulfill our life purposes, right? That's the human being's goal, generally speaking, for most of us. And we're not happy until we find that bliss. And once you, you know, I, this makes me think, I'm sorry, of the Sanskrit. Uh, there's a uh, something in Sanskrit called, is, uh, I think it's Sat Chit Ananda. And those words translate to being fully conscious and rapture. And so if you think, well, okay, in my state of being, I'm trying to find my way to being fully conscious and then being raptured, which would be maybe considered enlightenment or whatever, you know, whatever your definition of that uh, a higher vibrational state is, you know, you got to find your way to get to the bliss what if you can reach the rapture first and then work the way back? I mean, there, are there really any rules? So whatever it is, whatever little nugget that you can find that makes you happy or brings you any kind of peace, I don't care what the vibrational quality is, as long as it's something higher than what you're feeling now, even if it's sheer boredom is bound to be better than anxiety, right? It's a step up. So, um, you know, I don't care if you find a stack of playing cards and you start playing solitaire. It reminds you of a time in your life when you're playing playing a, a game with your friends and whatever can bring back or trigger a good feeling memory for you. You know, that's a that's a, a gateway to bliss, right? So, yeah.
it's okay to do as we go through this dark night of the school soul to go through a grieving process. You know, it is okay to spend some time being upset and angry. Allow those feelings to come through and allow yourself the time to process that. But when it gets down to it, it's it's not necessarily what happens to us in a in this lifetime. It's how we handle it. So it's, you know, at some point you've got to you know reach out for help, do whatever you need to do to process this, so that you can yeah you know, and figure out who you truly are and what you truly want at this time, and what you truly have to offer. Because we all have something amazing with inside of each one of us yeah um and and we don't just des deserve this change because we did this and we did that and we did yeah it's because we all have that piece of god and the creator within us yeah you are that's why you deserve uh -huh. because you yeah. are mm -hmm. just because you are and it yeah and it's it's up to you to reflect that bright piece of, you know, the creative that's within you, to share yeah. that with the world. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Yep. So, yeah, I'm, but I am, I'm real curious about the astrology piece of what's well, going I, on, because we do have, an, I know, I've heard enough to know we have a lot coming, going on right now, and a lot coming up even through the, the end of the year. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I don't understand at all. You know me, so I'm going to try to keep it short as I can because I, <laughs> there's a lot to say. Um, you can find, you know, I cover a lot of the moon astrology on my channel if you guys are interested. Um, and you can find this information. There are lots of good astrologers out there. But one of the things I wanted to talk about specifically because we're talking about the dark night of fall is that everybody traditionally is really fearful of Mercury retrograde. And um, Mercury is going retrograde at 12 degrees. It was yesterday, right? Uh, officially at 12 degrees of Scorpio. So if you don't know where Scorpio is in your chart, go pull up the natal chart. Um, you can just Google that, you know, do a, a put in the search, just type in um, free natal chart report. And just it pretty much, there's this, several websites that'll come up. And just put in your birth information and find out where Scorpio is, which house it is. And that'll tell you a little bit about where this energy is coming up for you specifically. But I always consider retrograde as a good time. Um, right now we've got Aries in its home sign of Mars in retrograde. In Aries, uh, a Chiron, which is the wounded healer, it's an asteroid, is in Aries right now. So what that essentially means is it's asking us, it's kind of, it's really reopening a little bit of these wounds, kind of like when Amber was alluding to the wounds, right? Well, even the ones that you, you think, oh, I've worked on this. I've got it, right? I'm, I'm healed from this one. Ah, but Chiron <laughs> will always be the one to come around and go, oh, you, peck, 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 you forgot this little bit. There's a corner down here you didn't quite get or whatever. Um, and there's new layers to that. So that, that energy is asking us to slow down and take our time. That's what a retrogrades do. And I consider, especially right now, um, because Jupiter already stationed direct, it's starting to move forward again. And that has ushered in a little bit more forward movement. But now we've got Mercury going retrograde in Scorpio, and that's going to happen. Um, it, it stations direct on November 3rd, but it actually the retrograde itself doesn't end until November 20th, so you might want to make a note about that. But during this time, because it's in Scorpio, Scorpio would be a sign that I would consider a ruler of the dark night of the soul. Scorpio is a very, very, very deep place where I really feel like this is a good energy, and, and Susan, you mentioned it's, it's fine to honor your anger and your fear. And it, you have to, that's part of this process, because if you get into a denial of it, right, and you just say, no, 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 I, I don't feel that, and you try to just deny it, it's going to just get bigger and bigger and bigger. The whole point of the lot of conscious awareness, right, is to shine that light on what is unknown, right, or what we're in denial of. And it's fine to honor 
you have to, you must honor those spheres. And Scorpio, this retrograde Mercury Scorpio energy is letting us do just that. Um, it's letting us honor those spheres, honor those pain points, honor the anger that we feel and maybe the injustice for the whatever injustice we feel like is going on. And but but also because it's such a deep sign, it's it's a deep, deep water, right? It's a water sign. It's really allowing us time to go backwards. Right? The, the, the planet itself doesn't actually go backwards. It just appears to when something is in retrograde. So it allows us, if we choose to take it, the energy is there in abundance right now for us to take advantage of it. And when we know about it, that knowledge is power. To be consciously aware of going, okay, how can I honor my fears honor my anger, honor whatever issues that are so big to me, but not let it drown me because you don't want to let you pull you. So like I was mentioning that uh, ocean current, you don't want it to bring you so far down that you get lost in those waters and, and it keeps you down because you want to find ways to bring your vibrational quality up and bring that heaven to earth, right? As Amber says, and, bring the five, the fifth dimension down through you, bring the light in through yourself. We can't really do that very well without going into those dark places. So that Scorpio Mercury retrograde, I really wanted to speak to. Mercury is the ruler of uh, all things, as we know, most of us know, because we've kind of been on the big stage this year. Everybody's taken a big interest in it. Um, it really lets us know to slow down and be more careful of the things uh, in communications, electronic things um, could go potentially wrong or transportation. So just be really mindful of any travels that you have going on. Another thing I just want to touch on real quick is that Uranus um, is making really weird aspects and challenges to some other places going on. And Uranus rules the higher mind. So if you want to think of Mercury as being like, the ruler of the individual consciousness. Uranus, you could sort of look at as being the ruler of cosmic consciousness. It's asking us, it's asking us to really consider the whole. Um, it's asking us to consider ourselves. So we've got Mercury and Uranus, right? So ourselves to in relationship to the whole. And Uranus brings a lot of shock and upheaval and surprises. So there is a lot of stuff being disclosed and there's probably going to be a whole lot more stuff that's going to be disclosed this month. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be surprising. If you think you can guess to what it might be, you're probably going to guess wrong because your honest tends to bring up things that you would never think about. And so, yeah, just be mindful of that too, is that um, the shock and upheaval doesn't have to be bad. Sometimes it's a good thing. If you were to win the lottery, that would be a Uranus thing, right? Because it's that. Uh, it's it's going to reveal truth. Yeah, it's going to reveal yep. big truth. Big truth. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, that was the main thing I wanted to touch on with that. And then, of course, we've got three illuminate, illuminations this month, um, which I was going to do the Blue Moon Transformation Trifecta in a live format. But um, I actually put out one for the Aries. I did, um full moon that we had to start off the month on the first and then Friday we've got the Libra new moon and then we've got uh, of course the cat that off the blue moon and on October 31st which is all Hallow's Eve so I'm going to be I've got videos out coming out for those two to kind of address that a little bit and how you can use that energy um, and how you can find it in your chart right so look and see where is Libra in your chart uh, find out where Taurus is in your chart because Taurus is going to be that full moon and this is going to help you really, the more you can understand about these energies in your own natal chart and how they might be aspecting you and where, where this stuff is occurring for you, that knowledge gives you power because you then, you know about what's going on and you can use it wisely and say, okay, I know that these potential things could happen so I can be prepared, right? And that's what it's all about is just having the ability to be, to be prepared um, for whatever might come up that we can equip ourselves and be as armored as we can be with this knowledge and these tools. So, yeah, there's a lot more going on that I could speak to, but. We yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear your perspective on, on December 24th. Of oh, 
Yeah. yeah, I know there's a bunch supposed to be things, you know, going on with that. So I'd love to hear your perspective about that in the future. Yeah, maybe we can talk about that some next month because I think our next one, I remember what day in November, it's a second Wednesday, right? Second Wednesday. Yeah, second Wednesday. We, be, we record it, but then we release it that second Friday, I think. Yeah, this be that'll be November 11th that we record. Yes. So well, I'll talk a little bit about that. That's going to be pretty interesting. I can say just on a short note that I feel a lot of incoming light. It's already started. It's like a, yeah. Now's the time to be really figuring out, in short, what you love, what makes you happy, what's, what's, what's not. If you've been wasting your time on stuff, don't waste any more time on it. Um, the Libra uh, energy over the next couple of days, you know, that's all about relationships and finding balance and harmony. So use that, use this energy to find the balance and the harmony in your life, in all of your relationships and the way you relate to yourself, the outside world, the information that you bring in, balance it, make sure it's not off kilter one way or another, right? You've got to figure out a way to make sure that you're looking at every single perspective that you can before you make an educated decision, hopefully one that's a heart mind decision. So that is all I will say about that. <laughs> um, one of the things a lot of people forget is, you know, they think about the quality of the food they're feeding their body, but they're not thinking about the quality of the other things that they take in. Even, you know, the news they listen to, the music they listen to, you know, whatever it is you're spending your time doing, that's what you're feeding your body and your soul. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, think about what you're feeding your energetic body as well as your physical body. Yeah. Make sure but, it's something that makes you happy, that's that tied to that bliss line. Mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's not serving it and you find yourself, like, being in that upheaval mode, check out of it a little while. You know, it, I'm not saying put it aside, for, forget it and do the denial thing and throw it down into the cave forever to be shut away. I'm just saying, just disconnect from it. You've got to. You you want to be able to, that you're keeping, the only way that we're going to be able to affect real change on our planet as a collective species, as the human race together, is to find our way to the highest points of consciousness and vibrational frequency that we can. And if we're constantly stuck down in these lower octaves of everything that's coming at us and coming at us, and even the things that are coming from within, and we're not able to find those places that take us back to that bliss point. We're, we're going to be still kind of hovering down. And we want to be able to bring that up as high as we can for ourselves, for each other, for the collective. Uh, that's what my harp's doing for me now, keeping that grounded. And, of course, the kids. But, yeah, the music, you're so right. Being careful with everything we take in, we've got to... Cut it off and just be with whatever it is. And that's why knowing us, knowing yourself is important. That's why knowing what, what is healthy for you is important. That's why going through that and, and finding what it is that actually is healthy for you. And, and I mean, that's so important. Mm -hmm. So I guess um, for the end, yep, I feel like just one of our biggest things is you know, vulnerability, connecting with each other, that help, and of course, our all of our angels, guides, spirit guides, past loved ones, all those here to help us, and of course, the holiest of holy, our great creator, um, just being here, knowing you are never alone in that dark night of soul, and any time of your life, never alone, and always remembering to call on that that thing that is greater outside of us, the holy peer, but also that's within us and remembering we hold it as well. Final thoughts, Susan? Just remember to reach out to somebody because you're, you're, you're not the only one going through this dark, this dark night of the soul, so is everybody else around you, so reach out. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's really all we have right now is each other. And I, and you know, your natural world too. 
Don't forget about those. They might not be able to talk to you in this language, but they can talk to you in so many other languages. And that's where you've got to be listening and tuning in, right? Tune into them so that they can tune into you. And you, there's a thing called vibrational resonance or frequency, right? The, uh, it's research metronome. Find out what those things do. If you put more than one in a room together, they finally sync up together after a certain point in time. And that's no different no matter what environment you're in. I don't care if it's positive or negative. It goes back to what Susan was saying about your, what you're feeding yourself. That goes for every single thing that you have in your environment that you hear, that you see, that you taste, that you smell, that you are experiencing, that you're hearing, right? So make sure that those things are staying attached to that cord, <clears throat> those filaments of, of bliss. Um, that certainly helps you get through um, the hard times, right? So um, I did pull a card, so I'll just share that real quick. Oh. Seek clarity. To experience an epiphany, is to have a sudden realization or spiritual flash that will change the way you view yourself and others around you. You get to see the situation more clearly as if someone just switched on the light. With this clarity, you can see the truth. You will also gain a sense of control within yourself to make positive decisions that will bring about happy and joyful outcomes. The mantra here is, yes, I can see clearly now. That's beautiful. So that's perfect. <laughs> um, I went in and, and I, you go ahead, Susan, yes. The mandala I pulled from uh, the deck that I created is for Salpagia Frequency 714 from the Cygna set. Surprise, surprise, journey within. Ah. Perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, spending time with you and taking care of yourself. Susan, can you hold that up really close to the camera? Yeah. So we can get that good juju. Mm hmm. And the, what uh, we is referred to as the swastika is in the middle. Um, and that is the map to the, you know, that is a very ancient symbol that is meant to be a journey the map to the journey with to go within and then the map to also find your way back out. Absolutely. You can see that symbol too. in some of the ancient paintings where you have mm -hmm. yeah, it's, holding a, a certain position to do a different forms of meditation, especially with Nagong and you see that symbol in the center of it. Yeah. It's, you find it a lot in India. Um, but yeah. And, and, it, and even in Native American. Oh, yeah. It's been used all over the world for oh, yeah. many, many thousands, hundreds probably, thousands of yes. years. Yes, uh-huh. So I went ahead, I had my grace card, so I went ahead and pulled one, and I love this. It's so perfect for this. So this one's called Imagination. Ooh. So it says, life's difficulties are a call to consciousness, a grace and a grace inspired event that challenges us to reach beyond limited thinking. Life's difficulties are a call to consciousness. A grace inspired event that challenges us to reach beyond limited thinking. And I can't agree with that more because, you know, that's what it is. I mean, by the time a dark night of the soul is said and done, it's hard for somebody who has been through these really tough, big challenges in life to look back on it and go, you know, I wouldn't trade that experience for anything because it made me the person that I am today. But on the point of imagination, I just wanted to say that that was one of the things I was actually going to mention that, that escaped me was that imagination is the way. If you can remember something good that happened to you, you can just as well, if you can't remember something good, right? If nothing comes to mind, imagine something wonderful because it's no, your brain doesn't know any difference between accessing a wonderful memory or one that you actually just create and that you imagine and that you envision. Hold that beautiful frequency that you get in your heart, right? And experience it throughout your whole body mind. So that helps to increase your uh, vibrational frequency. Those are just some basic 
things that you can do, right? Your imagination can take you a lot of places. And if you can't get out of that, if you have any issues, you know, you're feeling like you just don't know where to turn. You don't know who to re reach out to. It, you know, you can always reach out to us. You can find all of our information in the links below. And um, you can tune into our channels and, and probably get a lot more guidance and maybe ideas for how you can get through this and and support too, right? And that's what it's all about is just to find that support wherever you can. So if you guys don't have anything else, I will say um, if you enjoy this content, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And be sure to hit that little bell so you never miss an episode. And share this too with your loved ones, your friends, uh, who might be going through something hard themselves and we all know somebody who could benefit from this sort of stuff right now. So please share the information. Um, you know, that's another thing we can do is share information with each other, share these tools, share these resources, you know. Um, and we welcome always, we welcome your comments. Um, we love to hear your ideas for any future episodes. So if you have any ideas that you'd like to see us cover in the future, be sure and let us know in the comments below. And uh, we'll be sharing those on the second Friday of every month. Now, that is going to be a, a, that's something we try to do every month unless something big happens. But, you know, we seem to be back on a roll for now. So we thank you so, so, so much. And we honor your time in being with us. And may you be filled with love and light. May you be happy, healthy, peaceful, and free. Aho wado, may it be so. We thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next time on Are You Listening?